There's so much dust and soot that it actually hurts our eyes. So we just found her sprawled out on the ground. She's in really bad shape. And this chicken's beak has been cut here. Yeah. The problem with diarrhea like this, you get maggots in two or three days. Yeah, I mean, for her to get this in, she's not been right for at least the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. The prognosis overall is really, really poor. She is suffering at this point. Hey, it's Wayne. I'm at the vet and I have kind of an emergency that I need your feedback on. Call me back. When I was growing up in Indiana, I didn't have many human friends. I was in an immigrant family and we were very much disconnected from the people around us. There were very few people of color in central Indiana where I was growing up. So the friends I made were all animals. I would go out into the forest and talk to the squirrels, have conversations with birds, and try to play with reptiles and frogs. And usually they ran away from me. So they didn't like me very much. But I'm lucky enough to have found at least a few animals who do seem to like me. Lisa is my little girl. She's more than happy to chew off my arm if I'm having a bad day. Natalie and Joan are my two old ladies. They've been with me for 10 years and love each other as much today as I love them. And I gotta say, in loving animals, I'm not alone. This is an entire nation of animal lovers. When we look at people with their companion animals, their dogs and cats, they talk about them as if they're their children. Animals are our friends, they're our family. We're delighted by them. We're even sometimes amazed by them. And I think it's because we love animals that it comes as such a rude shock when we first realize that human beings are doing vicious things to them. Violence against animals is everywhere. Violence is in our clothing, it's in our science, it's in our entertainment, and above all, it's in our food. There's this video footage of a cow on a slaughter line who's anticipating her own death, and you can see her struggling to try and escape. All of us know how it feels to be trapped and scared, and all of us can imagine what it's like to be in that place. I know that if I were in that position today, and if you were in that position today, we would be asking for help. And the animals are asking for help too, and we need to answer their call. If corporations are torturing and killing animals everywhere, why doesn't the public know about it? The answer, quite simply, is that these corporations don't want us to know about it. All over the country, corporations are inducing state and municipal governments to pass laws that ban photographing, videotaping, and otherwise revealing the violence that's happening behind closed doors. These companies are more aware of the public scrutiny they're facing, and they're extremely selective in who they employ as a result. They have a particular demographic profile they're looking for. Generally immigrants, generally low-income folks, and generally they have to have some connection to someone who's currently an employee. If you don't have those connections, you're not going to get a job. So a job in a certified humane facility is probably the hardest to get minimum wage job in the country because they are afraid of activists coming in, offering a window into the world of animal industry. But the most terrifying thing about all this is that they're not just suppressing information about violence. They actually want to twist it into something good. These companies are actively trying to uh, cultivate and create a culture um, around the idea of humanely killing animals. Whole Foods, for example, has recently come out with a $20 million ad campaign called Values Matter, where they regularly tout all of the nice ways that they treat their animals. So the thing about this five-step animal welfare program is that they allow the slicing of, of birds' beaks in order to stop them from cannibalizing each other in these painful and terrible conditions. The castration of baby pigs so that their meat tastes better after they're slaughtered. 
And ultimately they're marketing all of this as humane, which is incredible and really violent because there's no humane way to castrate someone or slice off their nose and sell their dead body. It's almost as if you can choose how much cruelty you want to inflict upon animals before buying their body. On these farms, many of these animals are left diseased and distressed. And to deal with this so-called problem, Certified Humane has a few methods of recommended euthanasia. Stretching the bird's necks until they snap, shoving them into gas chambers until they suffocate, and repeated electrocution followed by slitting of the throat. There's no way to humanely do any of those things. Whole Foods is taking over America. And Whole Foods is taking over America not just with stores, but also with ideas. With the idea that somehow you can care about animals, but you can kill them too. Whole Foods is leading the way in building a terrifying new world where killing is an act of compassion. So many companies are following in its footsteps because that's where the money is. But it's a house of lies. We need to challenge those lies with the truth. <laughs> Going behind closed doors is the only way to show the world what's actually happening. Whole Foods is selling the public on a fantasy, but the reality is dark and violent. This is the first investigation documenting what's actually happening inside of a certified humane facility. A certified humane is a standard that is better than all of us. It has the full-throated support of the Humane Society of the United States, the ASPCA, and 50 or so other animal groups. This is the best of the best. And of course, Whole Foods sells it. So DXE set out to find out how things look from the inside. The first thing that hits you right across the face is just how congested everything is. Sometimes the hens are just piled on top of each other. I saw horrid despair. Each of the birds only receives a little more than a square foot of space. They replaced cages of wire with cages of flesh. So you see this little girl, she's lost almost all of her feathers. The stress from just living in these incredibly crowded, filthy conditions causes so many of them to lose all their feathers. Birds were suffering from rashes, inflammation, even self-mutilation. And we were just overwhelmed by the constant cries of distress. This is the face of humane farming right here. So the first thing that you notice is, is just the horrible filth and the horrible stench. There's feces everywhere. Many of these animals are covered in feces. This is not natural for a hen to be covered in feces and unable to do anything about it. She obviously should be able to clean herself, but she's so weak that she literally just has to stand in her own feces. One of the most horrifying things we saw was birds trapped in a manure pit. They were literally digging them out of their own feces. Disease is everywhere. The birds are so sick, you can hear them struggling to breathe. We would find hens who didn't have the strength to stand on their own two legs. With others, we couldn't even tell what was wrong with them. They looked like they had been tortured in a mad scientist lab, and in a sense they had. It's a mad scientist named Animal Agriculture. Curve of the beak. Almost every animal had their beak chopped off. Many of them were so deformed they hardly looked like birds anymore. In some cases, we found other mutilated body parts, including a dismembered bloody wing. And finally, there was a death toll. Documents in the facility showed that dozens and maybe even hundreds of birds were dying every day. Well, we're not sure quite what to make of this, but one of them appears to have passed away. All of these places that we call farms they're not farms. They're prisons where every single inmate is on death row. The breathing is labored. It's like one of her legs is sprayed out. 
And we're gonna try and do what we can to help this little girl. I don't even know. Touching her is a good idea because it looks like one of her wings is seriously injured. And sometimes the hens will be trapped in their own feces. And that could be what happened to this girl. It's not entirely clear. So we might try and pick her up a little bit. I don't know if there's anything we can do for her. So we're, we were not planning to do this. We're gonna confirm with the other members of the team by walkie-talkie that everyone's okay with possibly just taking this one day out. And we'll just have to figure out what to do with her in the meantime. But she, but she would, would die if they left with her. So we're gonna try and get her some bread and right there. It's just overwhelming. It really hits home, you know, that something that images and video can't do. And so um, it's just the overwhelming stench. And I always just feel like this is, you have to live your entire life in this suffocating smell. And this is, you know, on a so-called good farm too. And so you can, you can even imagine what the lives are like, you know, in other facilities. Yeah, this little one's eyes closed. It's, it's, it's really difficult to see that because you can tell she's so scared. She has no idea where she is. Her body is trembling as I'm holding her. She's trying to hide as much as possible, so she's going inside of my um, elbow just so she could be in a dark place because darkness is what she's used to. What's your reaction? Having kind of just seen what happens inside these facilities to this, this marketing that Whole Foods uses that talks about how compassionate they are to them. Yeah, how dare they? Like, blatant lies. I mean, it's the, the audacity that Whole Foods and other companies like Chipotle have. It's, it just angers you when you look at the victims and you feel them like trembling and shaking while these companies are profiting off of talking about how kind they are to animals. And here are the victims who have to go through and suffer. So how dare they? Frankly, all of us were pretty sure she was gonna die. When we took her to the vet, the first vet said, this hen has no hope. She's gonna pass away within hours and the best you can do is, is, is to euthanize her. We got a second opinion from someone who knows chickens very well and she told us that this hen has a chance. You just have to fight for her. And so for the next few weeks, we hand fed her, we gave her fluids almost every day. We had to put an IV into her to get the water that she needed because she couldn't even lift her own head up. She was so weak. We did everything we could and then all we could do was pray. So here's May, just a couple weeks later. Look how good she's doing. Because of what she went through, May will always be a little different, slower and weaker than the other hens. She had to relearn how to drink. They just need to know it's there. How to eat. You like your food? And how to stand just and make walk. Sure you're not oh, look at that, look at that, pretty girl. She's walking around, look at that. But her recovery has been nothing short of extraordinary. And it was a beautiful thing for me to see for the first time May walking around outside and looking up into the sky and seeing the sunlight above her head. 
It was a beautiful thing to see her dust bathing for the first time and seeing her have an opportunity to engage in this natural behavior that had been denied her for the first two years of her life. Oh, look at May. May got dirt all over her face. She's not very happy. May is the most loving animal I've ever met. She follows you around everywhere and squawks the moment you leave her side. And most hens like to be with their own kind. They'll, they'll hang out with the flock. But when you set her down with the flock and you walk away, she'll follow you everywhere. So it doesn't matter where we go on the yard, May pretty much is always gonna follow us. She has made one really good friend. And her really good friend is a rooster named Dave. And Dave is a really small rooster. He was getting bullied by the other roosters, so he never really got any companionship. None of the hens would give any attention because he was a little tiny rooster and was always getting bossed around. But May, since she was a different hen and wasn't really getting any attention from the roosters either, Dave decided to bond with her. And so Dave now follows May around everywhere. And in exchange, she gives him lots of kisses in the face. <laughs> And she's got a long and happy life ahead of her. You know, hens can live sometimes up to 15 years. Her life would have been cut short by this company, but she's happy now today, you know, thanks to Whole Foods. Good job, man. The scary thing, though, is that we had to leave so many others behind. May is one in a billion. Her sisters and brothers are still trapped, scared, and in pain. Whole Foods is the mastermind behind it all. They say they love animals. They say they're treating animals humanely, but they're lying. They're spreading violence into areas that are new and even bizarre. And we need to inspire people who love animals. Love is liberation. Love is action. People believe in doing the right thing to take action against these violent lies. It's not food, it's violence! It's not food, it's violence! Animals are not here for us, they're here with us. Just look inside your heart. You already know the right thing to do. If we believe that what we're doing is the right thing to do, then we should go in proudly and openly with no masks on and rescue these animals from a life of misery and torment. Animal rights is the next frontier of social justice. Activists risked their lives for the abolition of human slavery. They made grave sacrifices so I, as a woman, would have the right to vote. And to this day, they're fighting for the right of immigrants like me to be seen as more than just a missing passport. We need to have the same courage for animal rights if we want our dream of a better world to come true. And that is exactly what we are doing with Direct Action Everywhere. Across nations and continents, from all cultures and creeds, we are taking nonviolent direct action to the streets, into the stores, and yes, into the very places where animals are being killed. Our Open Rescue Network empowers activists to expose and stop the violence behind closed doors. Our international campaigns are building a true social movement for animals, inspiring all of us to speak strongly for equality among all animals. And together, we will achieve our dreams. We will fight until every animal is free. <laughs>